Hey y'all, Mikey and Rachel from Rock and K, and it's been uh, it's been an all right week, a little bit uh, busy, but uh, we'll tell you all about it coming up. Hey y'all, it's been a pretty good week. Got so a lot uh, done. we got we got a bit done. Yeah. And uh I didn't do anything um with the wiring or the renovation wise because I stayed pretty busy um working in the workshop and actually out doing firewood. So if you watched the last installment, you'd see that we bought some equipment and it finally showed up. And so Took you a minute to get used to using it. Last weekend through uh, pretty Yesterday. much this weekend, yeah. I spent bundling my firewood. Yep. Uh, we have as much firewood bundled right now as we used last year. So I am happy because I know I have heat for next year. And it's, the machine, the, the bundler works really well. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot less work. Um, as he splits it, he puts it into the bundler. When it's full, he straps it, moves it with the the, the, fort, the tractor, and it's where it goes. So it's it, it's probably saving him hours of work. Well, it's going to be nice because when it comes time to actually um, whip it down, yeah, like you've seen in previous videos, where I bring the firewood into the wood barn itself and then cut it basically in half to put in the wood boiler. Um, this is going to make it that I can actually move the whole bundle into the wood barn all at once versus throwing it in the, yeah. in the window. Yeah. And I can actually set the wood bundle right next to the saw, yeah. cut the, the bundles open and feed it directly into the saw and then get it stacked up yeah. in the wood barn. So it's going to streamline the process quite a bit. Uh, it does take just a little bit of time on the front end, you know, instead of, um, stacking it in the, in the rick, in the, the wood ricks, you know, the, the racks, um, you have to put it in the bundler and then bundle it up and stuff like that. But it, honestly, it's not that much more time. I, I mean, don't think so. Yeah. Because yeah. It, normally you're, you're having to move it and pile it in the, in the wood racks. And instead of piling in the wood racks, we're piling it in the, in the bundler. So, well, that, and on the, on the back end, there won't be no more moving it from the, you know, we carry it a few pieces at a time, throw it in the barn. Now he'll move an entire bundle, which is a meter, a uh, half meter, half meter of wood into the barn. We don't have to pick up every piece. Yep. So it's going to save, I mean, it's already saved him a lot of time on having to stack it, you know, because he has to put it in the forks of the truck or the, the, for, the, the, tractor and then he has to move it to the to the rack and then he has to unload it then you know so now he's just loading it into the bundler strapping it together and moving the tractor so he is actually i know that yesterday he knocked out what 12 bales uh it was 11 11 bales yesterday yeah I think in, it was. 10 in or like 11. four hours five hours yeah it was but i also was splitting yeah and then actually yeah. bundling the, so, the firewood in in the before he he he, he was probably I'm going to say he l saved at least three hours of time. Well, yeah. I don't know about three hours, but I was moving it before. I would split it, pile it, pile it on the forks. Yeah, and then move the drive tractor. Over, drive over to the racks. Unload it. Unload it all, and then go, go back, back around yeah. to, the, to the wood splitter. So now I'm able to set up the wood splitter. It's cutting I, it in half I the set time. the tractor right up next to it and yeah. just literally yeah. load the, the bundler. So in all it's going to save us a lot of time and it's actually great because i can move this stuff wherever i need yeah. to to put it um, with ease it's you know it's it's all together yeah. strapped together and so. then the workshop stuff um we have a woodworking project going on yeah. um as well as we're finishing up the roof for the wood storage for our fellow homesteader uh out that way yeah Almost straight line out that way. Um, and we've been doing gardening. We've you know, we've got to make sure that the the seeds get in, and you know we make sure our, our food stuff is in the ground. And that's yep. not. I mean, we just don't really record that. 
Yeah, um, we're gonna we're gonna start doing the recording of, you know, dipping out and and going into the garden and stuff, um, and showing off the garden because we're hoping we have like that beautiful garden this year. Yeah, we're really trying. Yeah, um, the frost did it did a number, and the slugs. Oh, yes, we, we have, are now waging war with slugs. We have slugs that keep showing up. Uh, We've gone scorched earth. Yeah. Uh, as scorched earth as we can, you know, naturally yeah, do. Yeah, you have to do it between environmentally. Using, between using diatomaceous earth and rock salt. Yeah. Um, we're going like, to yeah. probably do the whole thing where you bury the solo cup with the beer in it. We might try that as well. Yeah. Um, it's just we don't want to treat the with garden poison. with chemicals. And, yeah. you know, because that, that defeats the whole process of knowing where your food comes from and what goes into it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, nobody said homesteading was easy, right? Yeah. Uh, if it was easy, everybody would doing, be doing it. Um, I, it's just been such a wet, rainy year. This, yeah. Those slugs are out in abundance. Didn't deal with them last year, but last year was really dry, so we didn't have much of a, of a harvest. So we're really hopeful for this year. But with the slug situation, it's like, oh, yeah. my Lord. So homesteading isn't easy, um, but it's honest. Um, you know... Uh, I was talking about cutting cutting firewood this week to to uh, one of my friends, and they were like, "Nah, I'll pay for the convenience of having heating oil." And I was like, "Well, that that's all well and good, but what about when there's no oil, or when the oil yeah, prices go up?" Yeah, it's not sustainable. Up, or you know, you know, a, a two years ago ish, you know, we had the whole thing where all heating oil prices and and everything spiked, yeah. and heating oil went to almost three times the cost. Yeah. Um. And it affected everybody. And, it was not just the Americans; it was know, the Germans, and it was it was all over here in Europe. the The price of heating oil and and yeah. everything skyrocketed because um, the whole politics yeah. and the Ukraine thing and the pipeline. Yep. And so, you know, not to digress into politics or anything. It's just, you know, if things are going to go wrong and. Oil prices are going to skyrocket, and you know it even drove the prices of wood up, for, yeah. you know, uh, for a little while, because when people were heating with natural gas, they also had oil furnaces, and the problem became they couldn't get natural gas, but they could fire up their oil furnace, so they were buying up all the oil, and you know then there's a lack of oil, but others have fireplaces and wood stoves, so now they're buying firewood, and now there's less firewood. Yeah. So it was just a whole big circle yeah a whole big domino effect of you know natural resources that that you use to heat your house um became very expensive and you know for us we felt a little bit of a pinch because the firewood went up um it was it was kind of a weird process they did and the firewood went up probably 30 yeah at least um, i i don't know what it's going to look like coming up because of course our firewood season is actually is actually gone it's, yeah it's done um normally the 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 firewood from the village is already done and so we don't know what the prices are the the, the firewood is already felled in the forest and all the trees are laying and they're looking at you know now that it hasn't been raining that they can get it out of the forest and we're going to find out how much it's going to cost us this year to buy the wood from the village and hopefully it's a little cheaper but we, we don't know how that all flushes out yeah uh, you guys saw that we did get the tractor trailer full of firewood um you know full of the logs and you know we're going to keep doing that because you know we're, we're getting more equipment here and we're able to process it and we're able to get the firewood set aside and easily you know it's easy to move it so that it's was better just, to have it than yeah, not have it. That was just the first truck for... Because it takes years yeah. for it to dry properly for the stove. Yeah, that was the first so. truck for the, for this year. Yeah. Um, I, I do really think I'm going to have a second. Um, my, one of my neighbors wants to split a truck, which, I mean, that's even feasible because if you watch the video, it came with... Um, half of it was on the actual front part on the truck, and then there was a trailer behind it that had another, yep. you know, another matching um, amount of, no. of mm -hmm. logs on it. So my neighbor's talking about wanting to split a truck, and, and that's probably the route I'm going to go. Where Because we have at least two years of firewood that I can tell. Mm -hmm. And if we add the village firewood on the top of it, 
Now we're in the three year range. Um, so if I get an additional half a truck, we're probably gonna be more in the five year range. Yep. And if I just keep getting the small 10 meter batches from the village from now on, we'll always have about four to five years of firewood on the property that we know um, we're secure in being able to heat our house. Yep. Um, and not reliant on um, oil or anything like that. Um, we are speaking of being reliant. The uh, we've been very impressed with our solar panels. Oh my gosh! So yes. we are we are going to go ahead and invest in a few more. Yep. Um, so that we can start running, you know, battery banks and at night not use electricity. Um, we've dropped our 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 Five. energy use. So we did get rid of a, uh, a deep chest freezer. We yep. had two deep chest freezers. Um, and we got rid of one deep chest freezer and the photovoltaic system, the small little balcony solar or whatever you want to call it, the plug-in solar, has been generating eh, four or five kilowatt hours per day-ish. Um, you know, more, more, we'll say average three, three and a half kilowatts. But we've shaved our usage somehow, you know, when I'm yeah. reading the meter. We were somewhere in the 17 kilowatt hour per day, 16 to 17 kilowatt hour per day. Now we're down to 12. And now we're down to 12. Which yeah. is, when I last did the math, we were at 12 even, and we're actually coming down because with this lovely summer, we're getting better sunlight, longer sunlight. We are pretty far north, so I am anticipating that when winter comes, mm, yeah, we'll have it's not going to be so good. Yeah, But... Um, I really do think that uh, if I do the other system, it's going to be an, um, a non-grid tie system. And I'm, I'm going to do the system. I already have the inverter batteries and all this. I just don't have the panels yet. Yeah. Um, when I do this other system, it's not going to be grid tied, and we're just going to move stuff over onto the system. That's primarily the workshop, the garages, and, you know, the... The outbarns. The the outbuildings yeah. away mm -hmm. from the house. So like the wood boiler will end up on it and the pumps and all that. And then like the water barrels here in this lower barn, the pumps and all that will end up on it, which I mean, in the winter, we're really not gonna be using the pumps, but in the summer, you know, t the averages will be using more, more solar power than um, yeah. grid power. And um, I'm hoping because the because the non you know the, the because it's not grid tied and there'll be excess power or I'm anticipating excess power in the winter that we'll be able to use it to run heating rods in the water storage tank yeah so that when the batteries are full and it's a you know it's a bright day like this that the excess solar energy will be used to heat up inductive rods that are in the water tank. Yeah, that heats the to house. To kind of offset how much wood we burn. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get it all figured out and that's, you know, projects to come and that's way in the future. Um, we added a couple of new subscribers yes. on YouTube. Yes. Which um, reminds us, thank you very much, all of you that have you. subscribed. Please, if you like our content. Click that subscribe button. Click the like button. Hit the notification click bell. Click the notification bell. Give us a big thumbs up, please. Give us a please. big thumbs up. Um, we really appreciate all the It helps with the help. analytics. It helps with the algorithms yeah. and gets us a little more exposure. Um, speaking of exposure, the, the Karcher video, if you haven't seen oh, it. Oh, yes. Um, it's picked up. I did, you know, when I first started YouTube, I did a video on a, on a uh, pressure washer repair that I did. And while, you know, the, the, it does get rather detailed, um, and I'm learning how to make instructional videos and such. Um, but I did bring it down to the lowest level and actually really break down how to take the, the uh, pressure washer yeah. apart and make the repair. Um, but that video is still going and I'm still getting comments, excuse me, and getting a lot of people saying, thanks, you know, I was able to fix my, yeah. my pressure washer. Yeah. Which is why we started this. And that's the reason yeah. I made this channel. The reason I made this channel is if I went out there and I, I was trying to do a job and I didn't see it was on YouTube, I'm like, man, somebody's got to make a video of that. So that's what, what started and planted that little seed to start a YouTube yeah. channel. Um, like the, the bundler that I, that I did a video on 
uh, this last installment, there was nobody out there with, you know, doing a bundle video. And I know it's more of a European thing to put wood in the bundles and stuff, but I couldn't find one out there even in German language. Like there yeah. were videos out there, but none of them were of like the particular bundle I was looking at because or how to use it because yeah. there was only you know there was only one company out of France making a half meter bundler yeah so um yeah. I'm going to do a review on this uh this bundler and uh actually talk talk through it and actually do kind of a kind of an instructional video and all that uh, versus me just getting it set up, getting it on the tractor and trying it out. Um, but we have equipment, more equipment showing up. It's going to be craziness here on the homestead. We're in the middle of summer. The sun doesn't go down till 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night right yeah. now. Um, we're nearing the, you know, the summer solstice where it's going to be crazy. Where you it's know it's light at four the, in the morning and the, it doesn't get dark. The sun till comes 11. up at five ish, between four thirty and five. It doesn't go down till ten, eleven o'clock at night. We are rather north in latitude. Yeah. So um, Which is why my garden's behind most of y'all's there probably because we, yeah. of where we are in location. Um, my garden, I've actually got a lot of things that are a lot earlier than most people's. My potatoes, nobody has potatoes that look like mine right now. But that's because I hot frame them, you know. And, and we tend to work while it's daylight. So, yes, yeah. Um, the, the whole circadian rhythm gets gets uh, disturbed to where, yeah. you know, it's broad daylight, it's hard to sleep. Um, I faced that when I was stationed in Alaska when I was active duty and, you know, landed a midnight sun. That is actually no joke. Um, but we, we stay active and we're a lot more active. And then, of course, as winter comes and the days shorten up, we become less active. We put on a little weight. Become a little, you know, a little more sedentary, you know, sedate, and then spring comes around and we're back at it. So, so this weekend, um, Mike has they have a holiday called Finkston. Yes, it is the holiday camping trip. And Mike goes with his friends, his male friends, down to the river and they camp for the weekend. Um, basically, it's an adult beverage eating all weekend thing. Sometimes yep. they hike, sometimes they fish. We hike and, and they do all mostly that. eat and drink. And sit around and BS, you know. But they've been doing it for years now. He goes with his friends. So this so. is like the fifth or sixth year. Yes, it's a man's so weekend. So I'm, I'm looking at trying to get content put together and get you guys something. Yeah. But I will um, do some video, uh, you know, footage down on the river um, at the camping, the camping uh, event. event. Um, probably not going to feature any of the guys that are there because, you know, like I've told you in the past, Germans like their privacy. Yeah, they get a little weird. Um, but uh, there will be there will be stuff coming out. I'm actually uh, so tomorrow, you know, because it is Sunday. Tomorrow it's supposed to be weather similar to this, with you know mostly cloudy, partly cloudy, and some scattered showers. Hopefully, hoping, some scattered showers because I hope it rains during the day while we're at work, <laughs> so I don't have to water my garden. Whereas I need it to be dry because I need to do firewood. So. Um, but we both can't have it our way. But we are supposed to get rain through the week. Yeah. And so the plan will be to finish up the woodworking project in the, the workshop and get that done this week so that I can put that project to bed, um, hopefully by the end of the week. So I'm hoping that that footage, um, be, is that the weekly footage will be what, yeah. what we, uh, put out for you guys. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's been great. Um, we love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for subscribing. We really, really appreciate yep. it. Yep. So, um, we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, it did go a little bit long, but hey, I'm sorry. But, uh, we want to tell you all about what's going on. That's, you know, that's what this weekly roundup is about. But if you're thinking about family, if you're thinking about friends, give them the what's up or the WhatsApp. You know, you'd love to hear from them too. And until the next installment, of Vida Zane. Cheers.